Well, welcome to another episode of A Founder's Journey. I'm so excited about my next guest. He is the CTO and, and uh, founder of uh, Pocket RN. Now, Ryan Saunders, he, he also he used to work at Qualtrics. He, he's been in the, the tech world for a long time. And and so, Ryan, let's get right into it. Tell us, what what what, what made you decide to be a founder <laughs> to begin with? <laughs> yeah, no, great question. So I was somewhat forced into the situation. I, I, I never really wanted to join a startup or, or, or at the, you know, even found one, like that's even worse. Um, and I, I told my wife that I would, I would always have a very stable job and, and I'd always put family first. And so it was like, ah, oh, we could never do a startup. As fun as that sounds, I'll never do that. Um, but when I was back in college, um, about 10 years ago now, um, I was working with a entrepreneur group. They, they found me, there was someone in, in the neighborhood I was in and uh, he's like, hey, we're working on this, this smart pill box for giving out to tuberculosis patients so that they can take their pills regularly so they don't build up this super bacteria and they don't have, have major issues. And I'm like, that sounds really cool. Um, so I worked with him on the technology side and kind of let out that and it was fun. Uh, it actually went kind of far, it won several competitions, but at the end of the day, we really didn't go anywhere with it. But this great contact in the medical field continued to try and validate uh, technology, um, specifically software technology against me with these different types of medical assertions. And every year he'd come to me and be like, hey, we're, we have this new uh, pursuit that we're going after, like sanity check us here. And very regularly, I tell him like, this is not going to work. It's too complex. The value is not there. And he just appreciated it. Yeah. And then when COVID hit, um, and it was really hitting hard, he came to me and he said, we want to find a way in order to enable nurses to be able to have telemedicine visits. And I'm like, well, there's so many like telemedicine platforms out there. Like, why is this so different? He says, oh no, nurses up to this point have never been given this opportunity because the compliance standards, the compliance standards have always been too strict. But because of COVID, they're significantly uh, reducing what is required so that people can jump into this space. So there's nothing like this. Hmm. And most companies don't want to do this because it cannibalizes their business. You think like Teladoc, it's a doctor that is like replacing a provider, not enabling nurses at clinics. And I said like, that's cool. And this is something that really can be helping people out. And so I jumped into it and I jumped into it by, I was working at, at Qualtrics at the time. Uh, leading out a team on their automations and integration side. And so I just did this during the night. No one was being paid, just like a normal startup situation. And, and we went for about, uh, about 10 months when we started getting some really big interest from some of these investors in the, in the healthcare space. Um, some great people who had great connections and that expanded out. And eventually it was like, this is getting too big to be just a project we we have to turn this into a company and run with it it's 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 too neat it's too important it's too valuable and so in january i i left qualtrics um took a giant pay cut um and and left my cushy job and um and, and jumped into there so that's the long and short of it so so how did your wife handle all of this as, as you always promised it would never happen how'd that go <laughs> yeah like, you know, it's, it's like boiling a frog, right? <laughs> it was in the beginning, it was just, and I always had personal projects. I always had something yeah. that I was doing on the side. And so she's like, this water. Is your okay. exactly. It's like, this is, your, this is your personal project. And then suddenly it's like, oh, now it's, it's just bigger. This is exciting. Oh, now you're switching over to it. Oh, well, <laughs> like, so yeah, I think if it was like, I'm going to jump into a startup, she would have probably just left me. Um, <laughs> But and and she's been a trooper through it. She's been a she's an amazing trooper through it. We have we have two young kids, and uh, I, I wish I could be there more often for them. But um, but that's the price you pay when when you're yeah. when you're running at this level. Hmm. So so uh, you know it, now let's go. So this really was you never thought before this. Hey, this uh, it was not you're just not your cup of tea. And then bam, nope. it all of a sudden it just got too big too quick. And we say, well, how can you pass up the opportunity? 
Uh, that's a good summary of it. Exactly. Uh, well, that's a, and so now, now you're into it. And, and I mean, during that time frame, tell me, tell me the setbacks, the, the, the successes, let's, let's get into the nitty gritty there. Yeah. So the, the process was, you know, we've been very fortunate. I'll, I'll, I'll preface with that, that because we're kind of opening up this, this marketplace that never existed before, and there's a lot of opportunities and because there were really not hurting anyone in the, in any of our constituents, the, the clinics are very happy with us. The nurses love us. The patients get this extra benefit. Um, a lot of people are very interested in, in helping us go and, and move very quickly. And so that's been, that's been extremely fortunate that we have these, these expert people in the health field who are advising us, who are investing in us and, and just pushing us as hard as possible. But at the same time, we've, we've, we have these rose colored glasses on because things are moving so, so aggressively and positively that sometimes we have run into major obstacles where we, we make the wrong assumptions. Oh. And uh, I'll give you an example of one, like our, our biggest pitfall, everything we've, we've been able to overcome and it's been okay, but definitely the one that hurt the most was we were originally, uh, our initial pilot was with um, was with Stanford Healthcare, and we we got on this this grant with them, and it was this it's a big grant, and it and they were very excited to work with us, and we were very excited to work with them, but there was miscommunication, as in we assumed the grant was was what normal grants are, which is basically just money provided to you in order to fulfill um, and execute on it, yeah. um, when in reality it was meant to be an investment. And there was a there was just a pure wall of communication between us and this this team that was providing this grant at SHC, and we were working with each other for a few months before we realized that what they really wanted was a very large investment in our company, not a very large uh, cash out of a grant. And it ended up being very positive. Like the investment was the right move for both of us because they have been a long-term partner with us. We've been continuing to work with this team and continue to work with Stanford Healthcare. They're an amazing uh, company to work with. They're an amazing institution to work with. And if, we w- if they didn't have that investment, I don't think they would have put so much time and an effort into us. So at the end of the day, it was, it was definitely the right move, no matter what. But, but was, up front, bigger shock when it first happened or whatever. Huh? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up front, it was like, oh man, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and we were not prepped for that. Um, our initial angel round wasn't prepped for that. And so we ha- we had to kind of rotate things around. And it was just, it was, it was somewhat of a stressful situation because we didn't know like, could we actually keep them on the cap table? Could we go through with this? Do we need to find another way? We've taken so much time with them so far and we're really deeply invested with them. Like, is, is this going to work out? And it did. And, it, and, and well, it's I mean, lovely working with them. Yeah, that's point. one of those, like, really good ones. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a, that's pretty good. So, okay, so uh, and that can always be your success too, right? But is there some other things that you thought, wow, this is, uh, what was your big wins? I mean, like, you know, as far as, like, the team and that kind of thing, were you able to, did you have some either setbacks or wins there as you were lining up who you have with you and stuff? So we were very fortunate about our founding team. Um, and I, I honestly feel like th- this sounds like I'm just being prideful, but I have been told by the other two founders who found me, one of them being that um, that person that came to me, we, we had that long history. He was one of the two original founders. And then we had a, a CEO as well. And they were obviously looking someone with, with technical knowledge. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that I have a software engineering background Um, and I also have a leadership and and management background as well. And so I started out as an individual contributor, worked on that for several years, and then moved into a a leader and management role. And so I kind of had this broad spectrum of knowledge, and that's exactly what they were looking for. And I was crazy enough to to jump into something like that. So it worked out that the founding team was really strong, very strong from the medical side, very strong from the business side, and very strong from the tech side. And we all have a very similar vision and passion and what we want out of this. We're all not necessarily concerned with, with being financially successful more than just providing value to a group of people that have always wanted it. And so we're very aligned. 
And that's been incredible. And in the end, it will, the, the money will come anyway, right? When you would create the value. So, and, and that's the point is like the, the money should come to continue to create value and it has. And, and so, and, and the, having that focus all be aligned on there has helped us make sure we're building the company we want to build. Yeah. Um, there, and, and most of the people we've been hiring uh, have been, it's been very positive experiences. In fact, everyone we've hired has been very positive. There have been a couple close calls where um, people got very far in the interview process and then through due diligence, we learned things near the cusp of it and almost on the hiring phase. And so fortunately, our team is amazing right now, truly an incredible team. Um, but a, a few people that would have not fit our culture at all, and we had to figure that out through some pretty rigorous background checks or other people that just didn't work out for like legal reasons and they didn't come out till near near the end and any larger company would have been like duh that's just part of our vetting process but for someone as small as us when we're trying to move quickly like we started out with four of us in when we when we first incorporated it was those three founders and then we had another engineer the the day one and then now we're 15 people and and it's only been like what eight nine months and so we're trying to aggressively hire, but yeah, so we're still working through some of the kinks and some of those things have, have almost been costly, but we have been fortunate that so far we've been able to catch everything. Wow. Hey, Dale, that's, that, I mean, it's, it's like a little Cinderella story going on. I mean, everything's worked out really well, huh? It, no, it, it really is like, like, and I, I don't just say that to try and like, say like, you know, we, we've been very fortunate. We yeah. have been extremely lucky in yeah. this space. Not, not a lot of people are. Yeah. And I think it has to do with the incredible team that we have with the incredible connections that they have, but also just, it's a good space because no one else is here playing this game right, right now. And, yeah. and people will like other, or we're going to have competition soon enough, but it's really interesting when we go into pitch or we're talking to investors or we're just talking to anyone else and they're like who's your competitors we're like there's no one directly competing with us there are people who are doing things and we're just basically building and improving upon those such as like physical visits and now we're virtual but and and that that they don't believe it but as soon as we can convince them that uh, no one's in this space yet but it does mean that people are going to start filling it up. So we'll yeah, have come to some point. Yeah. Yep. So it's a Cinderella story. Now it's going to be a drag late race here in like a, a year or even less. So, yeah. no. so the, um, what kind of advice would you give? I mean, as, as you've gone to this now for, what would you say? I would say the most important thing is one, understand the values, uh, mission, uh, and really what you want to be defined as your company, not necessarily your product, not necessarily what you provide, but how you want to organize yourself, what you want to say is like, this is company X. And we did that out of the gate. We did it very much together when we had, at that point, we were about two months in and we had about eight employees and we came together and it was a very collaborative process. And we defined what is it that makes us us? That was huge. And we have kept with that today and that's helped define us a lot. Um, so like cer certain things that are really important to us and it's because of our team are like trust and integrity, um, but also like diversity, inclusion and equity. Um, a lot of companies say that that's important, but it's one of our, it's our initial like value for us. And we've been trying, trying really hard because of our team. It, it fits our team really well for us to be that. And so go find what it means to be you to be your company and and live by those principles. Qualtrics was another really good example of that. Their values were were built into like everyone just ingrained. Yeah. It was tacos yeah. and everyone knew what tacos meant. And it was these acronyms for like the things that meant Qualtrics. Yeah. And I believe that's why they were partially a very successful company because they defined those and they stuck to them. Did you feel like that affected you as you moved in this other one, but go come from Qualtrics and, and that, that thing and say, Hey, this is so important to you that you, you took it forward with you. Totally. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. So, and the, the mission and the value, the mission and the, um, uh, that one was more just something we collaborated together, but the values largely, a lot of them came from what I enjoyed and then thought was really passionate about Qualtrics. Um, and then also other people brought in theirs yeah. as well. So. Sure. Well, I tell you, so, um, 
in, your, in the whole thing, if you had a, a book or, or something that, that's made a difference to you, what, what would what would you recommendation and why? Yeah, so this one's a bit tangential because it's it's very different than everything else so far I've mentioned. But the book that I recommend, and maybe I recommend it because it's so general, so yeah. generally beneficial, is Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, have you heard of that one? No, I haven't, but I'm going to write it down right now. <laughs> yeah, it's by uh, it's by Daniel Kahneman, and uh, it's essentially how we get through. Um, we we have this very unconscious uh, unconscious way that we think. Yeah. And there's a very deliberate conscious way that we should be thinking and how often we fall into these pitfalls because we, we don't think things through, uh, in the right way. And so it's very much, it's, it's just the book on critical thinking and it's, it's pretty much the Bible on it. And it's a, it's a Bible, like it's yeah. a thick, it's a thick bugger. Um, but very good research in it. Um, and he's done a good job of trying to keep the content up to date. So for example, like his entire blog says, don't read chapter four, like new research has shown that chapter four is completely wrong and it's all about priming, Mm -hmm. um, but incredible book full of really useful things for everybody. If you're in an IC role, if you're a program manager, if you're a software engineer, if you're the CEO or business analyst, anyone can benefit from that. So that's why it's my number one pick. All righty. Well, that's uh, that, that's what I hadn't heard before, so I'm looking forward to reading that one. Well, I tell, I tell you what, so if somebody wants to, to get to know you a little better or, or connect with you, how would they do that? A little more about your company? What would they do? Yeah, so a couple of ways you can do that. So you can always, if you want to know more about Pocket RN, you can always just go to pocketrn.com, RN as in registered nurse. Um, if you want to connect with me, um, you can do so on LinkedIn. That's pretty much the only social media platform I go through nowadays. And it's just on LinkedIn. If you search for Ryan Saunders, I'm there. My LinkedIn is just R-Y-A-N-S-A-U-N. That's, that's my tag. Um, and if you're going to link me, I, I obviously get a lot of requests that I ignore. So just give a little preface that like, hey, you know, I, I heard about you from this and I want to connect uh, just to be in your, in your network or to ask you some questions. I, I often talk with people on LinkedIn and I love engaging with people, but if you're going to sell me something, I probably will not be connecting with you. So. <laughs> well, I, you know, I appreciate it. I think that it, obviously you're part of the text down a circle and, and, and if those are, if you're not part of that out, out there, you, Yes. Go on it, and, and then you can see him there as well. But uh, well, thanks, Ryan, for for uh, uh, um, you know being part of this and and hearing your journey, and it's it's been fascinating. So um, appreciate your time. Hey, no, thank you, Michael.